Hello, and welcome to the Reactor Core Masterclass. In this series of videos, I'll be explaining the ins and outs of the Reactor Core environment, and I'll show how we can use it to create basic building blocks for synthesis, such as oscillators, envelopes, delays, various effects, and so on. This set of videos is the second in a series of three hour long courses about Reactor. So it's expected that you are either familiar with the first course or you have a good understanding of Reactor Primary and basic synthesis as well as simple event processing in Primary. Okay, so Core is basically its own programming environment separate from primary and in order to interface with primary we can use one of two devices we can, in the core cell drop down menu the audio core cell and the event core cell so let's take a look at the event core cell first you can get inside by double clicking just like any macro or instrument and you can add new inputs to interface with primary by right-clicking on the left-hand column. You can add outputs by right-clicking on the right-hand column here. And you'll notice that these inputs and outputs have red circles on them that denote them as events. Likewise, in the audio core cell, you can add new inputs and outputs. However, for the inputs, you have the option of setting them to be either audio or event. And audio core cell can accept both types of inputs. However, the outputs do not have this option. They can only output audio signals. One of the great advantages of core over primary is that once we get these audio or event signals inside a core cell, they are processed in the exact same way. And what that means for us is when we load up any module here, you notice that the circles are neither red nor black, they're white. They can accept signals of any type. And this is just really useful. There's never any time when you need to worry about how you're gonna translate an audio signal to an event signal or whatever. Another reason why I prefer core to primary, and the reason why we're covering core before we cover anything having to do with complex event processing in primary, is that in core, the way that events are processed makes a lot more sense. And to illustrate that, I'm just going to show a very common bug or type of bug that you'll find in Reactor Primary. So I'm going to connect the button to both the inputs of the router and we'll use a numeric readout to see what value is coming out the output of the router. So to my mind here the button should travel through the router whenever it's equal to 1 so the numeric value should be receiving a value of 1. However when we turn the button on and off we see that it's receiving a value of 0. So what's happening here is because I connected the bottom output of the router first, the button is actually sending an event to the one input of the router before sending an input to the control of the router. And if we reverse the way that we wire this, we're actually going to get different functionality from our structure. And I find this to be horribly unintuitive. It's responsible for a lot of bugs and a lot of confusion around events in primary. And fortunately, the core environment sidesteps this issue altogether. All events are processed simultaneously. And I'll show you more about what that means a little later on down the line. All right, so these abilities to treat audio and event signals as being identical as well as eliminating the errors associated with event order that happen in primary are two of the major benefits of core. 
It's also way more CPU efficient for a lot of tasks and has other advantages that I'll be outlining in future videos. In the next video, I'll go over the basic components of core and how to use them, the basic different signal types and how to use them.